Hello everyone, I'm Carla and I'm a PhD student at the Electronic Visualization Lab at the University of Illinois Chicago and today I will present sequential mining modeling for cancer symptoms. Precision medicine in oncology is an emerging approach that focuses on data from cohorts in addition to the information of individual patients to create personalized therapeutics. Despite increasing survival outcomes in many patients, treatment leads to symptoms that greatly affect quality of life for years after the completion of treatment. In other words, even though cancer treatment is supposed to have positive outcomes, for which we use the rose as a metaphor, it can negatively affect patients' quality of life, like the rose's thorns. In head and neck cancer, interdisciplinary teams seek to better understand what determines late symptoms, which are present after treatment completion. However, from a mother's perspective, modeling long-term symptoms is particularly challenging due to the multivariate and temporal nature of symptoms which are interconnected and dependent on the treatment plan and other clinical factors. Using alternative machine learning methods, such as sequential mining, can uncover predictive patterns, but they often output large-scale and complex patterns that are hard to interpret in a clinical context. Thus, there is a need for mixed human-machine analysis solutions that can help to interpret and validate modeling results in a clinical setting. What makes this problem difficult is that the data is large-scale, multivariate and temporal, consisting of ratings for 28 symptoms, where the temporal modeling poses additional constraints in addition to missing data. Specifically, the timeline is split into two stages according to the monitoring protocol, the acute stage, which is during cancer treatment and frequent, and the late stage, which is after the completion of treatment and more rarely collected, although of primary interest in this problem. That is because of interest is reducing the patient burden. An interesting new approach to this problem is an unsupervised machine learning method called associational rule mining. In particular, sequential rule mining predictive modeling can detect temporal associations between symptoms and predict long-term symptoms. However, it also outputs many repetitive interconnected patterns that are hard to interpret to understand treatment-specific late symptoms and associations between acute and late symptoms. Nonetheless, the results need to be actionable in a clinical context, so complementary analytics tools are needed to present modeling results. Our contributions include a modeling alternative for predicting late symptoms based on prior symptoms, a human machine analysis solution to assist in symptom modeling using sequential mining, and the design of scalable custom visual encodings that capture different sampling rates in large-scale multivariate temporal symptom data. We evaluated our solution and extracted design lessons learned. In medical applications, multivariate temporal cohort data visualization typically focuses on summarization and aggregation of patient features, but rarely accounts for co-occurring patient measurements. Role visualization for medical domains focuses on disease progression or treatment toxicity prediction, but does not support temporal associations. Our work tackles multivariate temporal data modeling and prediction with sequential mining and it applies this to the late stage symptom problem. The resulting rules leverage the assessment of temporal symptom associations in a clinical context. In this process, we handle specific challenges related to large scale overlapping patterns. Our main goal is to predict long term symptoms so that treatment decision making can be improved. We use sequential mining to predict late symptoms based on acute symptoms. We perform this for each existing treatment separately to account for treatment-specific symptoms. We chose this method due to its ability to capture the associations between acute and late stages. Our symptom modeling pipeline starts with the symptom ratings reported by patients at several time periods during the acute and late stages. We only consider medium to severe symptoms to minimize patient intervariability and focus on symptoms that affect quality of life. Following the two-stage monitoring protocol used by oncologists, we use two-stage symptom sequences for the sequential mining model by grouping the ratings into acute and late symptoms. We input the symptom sequences to the sequential mining model. Here is an example rule showing that nausea and fatigue, which are common during the acute stage, precede vomit and drowsiness in the late stage. To ensure reliability, we keep only the rules with high enough confidence in the predicted patterns. Because the filter rules still include many overlapping patterns, we perform rule clustering to increase interpretability and actionability. The front end of our system is split into a top static view and configurable quadrants, each of which can show details about one of the five available treatments. 
There are six visual encodings related to symptom and cohort sequential role mining analysis, which are described in our manuscript. Today, I'll describe our rose glyph encoding. Our visual design is inspired by Florence Nightingale's rose diagram. We use a rose glyph to encode the trajectory of a single symptom severity. The mean rating across the cohort is encoded for each time interval using variable radius petals, with the width of the petals driven by the two-stage data sampling rate, more frequent during acute than in late, and by the modeler's interest in late symptom prediction. The symptom trajectory starts with the first time interval at 9 o'clock and progresses clockwise, with pink petals encoding acute treatment time intervals while purple petals encode late intervals. The flat interval mapping is in alignment with the clinical assumption that symptom variation within an observation interval is not significant. The rose glyph has several usages within the interface. First, it provides an anchoring point for all treatment plans by showing mean symptom ratings over time for the entire patient cohort and facilitating inter-symptom comparison. In this example, dry mouth, taste and swallow show higher ratings than other symptoms and have similar trajectories. Second, it is used to illustrate the rules clusters produced by the sequential role mining. The clusters are separated horizontally into the acute and late stages, with each cluster highlighted using a categorical color-encoded envelope. The 2D projection in the acute denotes symptom similarity, while the rose glyphs capture temporal severity to facilitate cluster understanding. Here we can see that the two existing symptom clusters share its skin as a common symptom and that each cluster has a different symptom predicted in late, namely dry mouth and taste. The legend on the left shows for each cluster prediction scores, interpreted as relevant clinical risk scores. The low opacity symptoms in the late stage show common late symptoms that did not occur with enough frequency to be considered by the model. Third, the rose glyph leverages symptom comparison for multiple treatments. We can see here two treatments that both have two symptom clusters and that dry mouth is predicted in late in both cases, but the second treatment shows higher late ratings. We evaluated the proposed system using multiple demonstrations and case studies. The evaluators had experience with cancer data modeling, and some of the modelers had extensive experience in oncology. One example of a case study starts with the comparison of two treatments, ICC and IRT. A first glance at the top view shows that dry mouth taste and swallow show higher severity in general for all patients, regardless of their treatment, while also being in close proximity due to their similarity in mean severity trajectory. The bottom charts show that there are many similar toxicities for both treatments for the acute and late stages, with most common symptoms being dry mouth, taste and swallow, affecting more than half of both subcohorts. The top views show that the sequential role mining model has found two temporal clusters for both treatments, showing similar acute and late symptoms, However, taste isn't predicted for IRT. The low opacity rose glyphs show common symptoms that match the statistics from the bar plots. The model groups together symptoms with similar trajectories, such as mucositis and pain in ICC, with lower severity for the last time point as opposed to the entire cohort as shown in the top rose glyph row. The acute stages contain interesting outliers, such as skin in ICC and sleep in IRT, that both predict dry mouth in the late stage. The evaluators concluded that the symptom clustering component was an effective way to understand the impact of late symptoms across subcohorts and expressed excitement to analyze the sequential mining model results from more patient symptom data. Qualitative feedback shows that our sequential mining support tool helps modelers navigate the data in a scalable way in the context of decision making and it helps correct assumptions about disease progression. We extracted several lessons, starting with the use of visual scaffolding to introduce new visual encodings and the use of configurable interfaces in machine learning modeling. Next, a focus on actionability and interpretability in adapting the modeling results to a clinical context can improve reception from medical collaborators. Our work supports sequential mining symptom research through a hybrid collaboration between humans and machines. In terms of scalability, the rose glyph can encode more time intervals and the symptom clusters can represent patterns for an unlimited number of patients or rules. Our approach is generalizable to other prediction problems that tackle multivariate temporal multi-stage data modeling. In this work, we describe the novel human-machine environment to develop sequential mining models for predicting late symptoms and support temporal symptom associations for cancer treatments. 
we arrived at this solution using scalable custom visual encodings that support the analysis of large-scale multi-stage with variable sampling symptoms and by emphasizing interpretability and actionability. The evaluation of the resulting system proved its utility and helped in identifying design lessons learned. We would like to thank our collaborators, lab members, and our funding agencies for their support. Thank you.